Hello Cancer. Welcome to the channel. This is Asnoitia here. For those of you who are returning, thank you so much for liking, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And for those of you who are new, welcome. So this is a general love reading, and I'll be looking into the feelings and emotions of the person that you are connecting with on a romantic level. What it is that they're feeling and thinking towards you currently. The deck that I'm using is the Goddess Oracle deck by Amy Sophia Marashinsky. So some of you may have been in a relationship with this person in the past. Could be a current relationship. For others of you, this could be a situationship. And for a small portion of you, you could have met somebody where you feel there's a whole lot of energy. This is past life energy. But no one's really speaking up, even though there are feelings and emotions here. Wow, Cancer. A lot of um, emotions, feelings, and doubts. Good Lord. This is difficult. It's like you know there's something there, but it's not progressing forward as you may like. And wow, we have anger and rage under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. For those of you who are new, my method of reading is just slightly different. I do have the ability of channeling through my higher intuitive self to get the answers that I need. I do not channel through any spirit guides. I never have. And at the end of this reading, I will be channeling through Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel to provide you with some advice based on what comes up today. All right. First card is the strongest here. We have power, followed by mystery. Then we have compassion, challenge, love, doubt, creativity, nourishment, synthesis, and then we have anger and rage under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. I'm going to express to you what it is that your person of interest is feeling towards you currently. My dear Cancer, I do love what you do, and I do admire the power that you have over me. Yes, I feel powerless, because you are so powerful. You are very tempting, and there's something in this connection that just makes me emotionally vulnerable and weak in the knees. I'm unable to move forward. There's a part of me that feels no matter where I go, no matter what I do, something's going to happen. And I, I'm always thinking about you. I'm always tempted. But in addition to that, what I have realized that I feel I've met someone. This is you. Who really makes me feel as if there is such a thing as a past life spiritual connection. Is there such a thing? I am now starting to believe perhaps there is. Why? Because everything that I feel towards you, I feel as if I've known you from before. As if so many things you and I have done, the things that we say to each other, I feel extremely comfortable. Sometimes there are certain things that I don't know about you. But for some reason, I still feel as if I know you. I question the universe and I question the heavens. Why? Why are you in my life? Why now? Why not before? Why not long ago? I question this. And no, I do not receive an answer. But it boggles my mind how you and I have met under these circumstances. 
why things are so complicated. It's almost as if the universe is teasing me. I can't have what I want. But I want it so badly. When you're not there, I can sometimes smell your scent. And when you're not with me physically, I can feel your presence. In my dreams, you were there. And in my dreams, I feel as if I know you. And I feel so comfortable. The things that I have said and done, I know what I've gotten you into. Your life was so different before. And for a time, things were good. They were great. But then, for me, it became a little too intense. And I took a step back. And now I have compassion for you and I have empathy and sympathy for you because of the things that you have gone through. But it's also because I know I've put you through them. Moving beyond this, talking to you, trying to make things right, I find this very challenging now. The challenge is so strong. This is now a problem to which a solution cannot be found, I feel. A riddle that just can't be solved. But I do love you. I have love for you. And this love I know and I feel is unconditional. Everything that I have gone through, everything that you've put me through and I've put you through, it all stems from this feeling of love. The love that I feel for you is sacred. I realize now it is very pure, very true. This is what one would call unconditional love. It's a feeling of newness, this feeling of being fresh, alive, thriving. But because of the things that I have said and done, now I feel doubt. Maybe this won't even work out. I have my doubts. Thinking perhaps it won't work out. I also feel that in this connection, there's a sense of creativity. Wanting to be that person who can create something. I want to create something in this connection with you. I want to create something that will be long-lasting for the world to see. A web of love I would love to weave and make you the center of my world. But that web may be very fragile. If there are storms, if there are winds, the ebbs and flows of emotions, will that web stand the test of time? Or will it just simply break? I doubt that there is now a sense of trust and faith that once existed. I have found in you someone who is very nurturing, caring, protecting, and loving. You have this ability of making me feel fulfilled. Emotionally, spiritually, and physically. You are the perfect mate. I feel that in this connection, there is this understanding. There is this desire that I have. I want to be that person who can be there for you when I know I haven't been. But I feel that a change needs to occur. 
I'm just finding it very difficult to do that and to even find that courage. Right now, back in the day, there was a sense of peace and harmony. And I want to restore that peace and harmony. I want to make things better. I want to restore things to the way they were once before. Because I have hidden things deep down in the darkest shadows of this forest, hiding the truth, hiding certain things from you, certain things that I didn't want you to know, certain things that I didn't want you to know because it would hurt you. But now there's a part of me that truly wants to just open up and let it all out and let you know. What are those secrets that I've hidden so long ago? Overall, the things that I have said, the things that I have done, I have really ruined something that was once so beautiful. And I can't forgive myself for that. I am angry at myself. There is rage. There is irritation and annoyance. I don't know why I did what I did. Maybe I wasn't in the right state of mind back then. Even now, I know what I've done is wrong. And I also know that it is a very big challenge for me to overcome this. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that one day, you and I, we can connect. And the things that we feel, we can express that. Because right now, I feel a very strong spiritual bond between you and I. Something that I cannot escape. All right, Cancer. I'm getting the word conundrum. Conundrum. Um, it does appear that your person of interest, yeah, they are interested in you. But something has happened in this connection that really makes them take a step back and they're wondering, like, should I move forward? Can I move forward? Yeah, it's that thing where people call it shoulda, coulda, woulda type of thing. That's that's the situation right now. Um, or rather, should have, could have. <laughs> there is love. Now, this type of love, guys, I don't see a lot of sexual cards here, like pleasure, lust, passion. But what I do see is a sense of like this very basic kind of love. A love that exists by default. That's the kind of love this person has for you at this moment. And this is a general love reading. Some of you may have a lot of passion and that's, I mean, it could, yes, it could be. Because we have the challenge card here and we also have compassion. That means somebody feels that they're guilty about something too. They may have treated you in a very wrong sort of way. And because of that, now they're finding it extremely challenging. How do I even deal with this? because of the way that they treated you. Okay. Let's have a look at another set of cards. I have here, this is the Lover's Path Tarot. So with this deck, what I like to do is have a look at any sort of, hmm, okay. These are reasons or rather, two reasons out of the many, why things went downhill. So things in the beginning were going great, they were going up, and all of a sudden, boom, they just went kind of down, they plummeted that way. What was the reason? Things were going great, you thought you both were on track, and all of a sudden, this person just either ghosted you, 
they just left, they faded, they just com they started to communicate with you less. Their messages now are maybe once a week, once a month, very, very scarce. And then we also have that feeling of lack of closure. They never told you what happened. You were close and you would at the very least expect an explanation, but a lot of people don't talk. A lot of people don't talk because they do not want to create a scene and they do not want to be that person who is in charge or who is responsible for hurting you. Usually people don't want to be put into that sort of situation. They feel very awkward. So what do they do? They just stay silent and they fade away into the darkness. Here, we have the Nine of Cups and the Four of Staffs. Traditionally, these are very beautiful cards, but this deck I read in the reverse. This is for those of you who were in this situation. This is in the past. The first set of cards you just saw, that is the current status. Okay, let's have a look. Nine of Cups and the Four of Staffs. The Nine of Cups. Yikes. Complacency. How this person was taking this relationship for granted. Overindulging. The inability to receive pleasure and having a lot of dissatisfaction. It appears here that your person of interest did want you. They wished for you, but there was a sense of complacency at some point in time. And they started to take this relationship, this specific one, for granted. They thought that you're always going to be there. You're always the way that you are. It's never going to change. And the issue here is overindulgence. And this is why <clears throat> they may have been overindulging in sensuality and wanting their wishes to be fulfilled. But they were overindulging. So this is somebody that essentially may have used the other person. That is not good. That is not a good feeling. And that is why you also had the compassion card. So yes, there is an element of sensuality here and of lust, but to the point where somebody here feels as if they were used. We also have here the four of staffs. The four of staffs here talks about how this person, at some point in time, they were wanting stability. There was frustrations and disappointments at home. So it does appear that whoever your person of interest is, wherever they were from, they were having a complicated situation at home, in their home environment. This could be a current situation that they were experiencing, or this could literally be stemming from their past, even their far past, right? Way back then could be from childhood. It could be trauma. Whatever it is, their emotional and mental state was affecting this relationship now. What can somebody do when they feel like that? Crosswatcher, you need to talk to somebody. Because we cannot live like this forever. Otherwise, you'll be sabotaging every relationship. You need to heal from what happened, that disappointment at home, whatever that was, whether it is trauma, hopefully not abuse, but it could be, whatever it is, you have to heal in order to move forward in any connection. Cancer, even if you were to be with this person, it would be very difficult because I do not see this individual truly feeling that sense of emotion Right now they are because of the first set of cards you had. Right now they're starting to understand what emotions are like, what it feels to miss somebody. They're feeling that now. However, back then, they took it for granted. They did not value it. Now they are starting to value it once it is not in their life. That's fine. That's the way life is. Sometimes we have to step away in order to have another individual feel that value. And that's what happened. You don't know what you've got till it's gone. That's exactly the situation here. All right. So I have here. 
techniques. I have here the beginner's tarot. And with these cards, what I like to do is have a look at any actions, any plans, any intentions they may have towards you. Aha, uh -huh. there you have it. So we have here the Eight of Swords, the Hanged Man. Wow, Ten of Wands. Followed by the Five of Swords. And then we have the Eight of Wands. Under the bottom of the deck, the overall arching theme. So the majority of these cards, Cancer, they are quite challenging, actually. Here we have Eight of Swords. You are dealing with somebody who is stuck in a situation with somebody else or in a situation in terms of an organization, somebody who or something that is governing this person's actions in a way. Anything that they want to do, somebody's watching them like a hawk. So often I say here, your person of interest here is literally blindfolded. Somebody does not want to see something else. They don't want them to see something else or hear something else. They are tied, their arms, their hands, leg, feet. They're surrounded by swords. They're caged, right? No freedom. And far into the distance, we have somebody else watching this person like a hawk. So does your person of interest have freedom? No, they do not. This is probably why you had the four of staffs just earlier telling you that there's disappointments in the home. This person feels very caged very, very caged. Whoever is dominating this individual, either it's a person or an organization. When I say organizations, it could be somebody who was at work, <clears throat> falling in love with somebody at work. And the company policy guidelines are no, you're not supposed to date people at the workplace or rival companies. Nope. Can't date any competitors. Um, it could also be somebody here who's with a partner, a spouse, a third party situation where somebody here is watching them, which is what we all do, and they do not want them to fall prey to somebody else. Prey, that would be here. You, they would be the game. So we have a situation where this person is extremely restricted, and these are external and internal forces. So external is definitely the other person who has control, but internal is what this person feels because of the fact that they have been in this connection and this situation for so long. They themselves don't feel that they have the courage or the guts to even move forward. They are stuck. In the meantime, while they are stuck, they are hoping with the hanged man that somehow you will reach out to them. They wonder and they think, What's this person going to do next? What's Cancer going to do next? Is Cancer going to reach out to me? How are they going to react to what I said last time? This is what they're thinking. In the meantime, they are also, with the Ten of Wands, very burdened. They feel that there's so much that they have taken on in terms of workload, family obligations, anything to do with their life, career, finances, all that stuff. They feel very burdened. There's a lot of responsibilities and tasks that this person has in terms of the weight of the world. It's on the shoulders. The only thing they can do is possibly delegate some of those tasks or get rid of some of those responsibilities. Maybe they can push it off till next year. But the reason why they cannot give you their time, energy, and effort, it's because they are so overwhelmed. And they're getting broken down. They're overwhelmed with responsibilities. Part of this could be from work. And part of this could just be everyday life. Issues from life that we have. Family-related issues. Health-related issues. Anything. Bills, right? And then we have here the Five of Swords. What's interesting about this is that you do have somebody that you're dealing with who wants you and they have a lot of ego-oriented competition around them. Their feeling here is, you know, I can't have my cancer, and I don't want anybody else to have my cancer either. So if I can't have cancer, no one can. It is 
a situation, isn't it? Um, I'm not going to title the situation, but here we have someone who wants it all. They want you, they desire you. But in a very logical, but I'm also getting the word irrational sort of way, they're also stubborn. They want to be that person who you go to. And they do not want, want any other suitors or anybody, for that matter, who can be in line, who's next. There's nobody next. I'm the one who's next. That's what this person wants. They don't want anybody to be in your life that could be a potential partner. They want to be that person. And by hook or by crook, they want to be that individual who can actually move forward, make a plan, and win your heart. The problem is all of this is happening behind the scenes. It's as if they work in a very indirect way, and they don't work directly with you. They work indirectly, which is truly something that doesn't work very well. Being indirect here, it does mean that in this connection, so much has happened that in order to even move forward, something else has to happen that's so negative and so different. It doesn't come under the limelight here. It doesn't come into focus what they're doing. But they're doing something behind the scenes and they're doing it indirectly to be with you. Here, the one action card that I do see that has the most amount of impact, truly impactful, is the Eight of Wands. For sure, you are dealing with somebody here who wants to finally reach out to you. They want to talk to you. They want to text you, but they want some sort of communication. They feel it's been way too long. But that is the overall arching theme. But the problem is with the Eight of Swords. Will this person be able to do that? They're waiting for your reaction. Are they too overwhelmed to do this? And how many people are in the way? This is a problem your person of interest has experienced, they've felt. But what they truly want here with the Eight of Wands is to have a talk with you, to talk to you. This is not a problem. This is not bad. This is actually a good thing. I would just recommend, Cancer, that if and when this does happen, it's important for you to give this person their space. Because what I'm seeing is they are very stuck. Emotionally, physically even, mentally even. They are completely stuck. And if you want somebody to be in your life who is committed, they need courage. They cannot do what this individual is doing. This is not how a relationship can work. Because it is so much struggle. It has to be absolutely easygoing sort of connection where there is no hassle. It's a hassle-free connection. That's what you want. Here, there's a lot of internal and external forces. And external forces sometimes also means other people. So other people, this could be people who are jealous friends, family members, people who you feel that are perhaps in an organization that don't want you to be together, right? It could be anything. But the fact is here, there's a sense of restriction. And deep down in this person's heart, they do want to reach out to you. But they also find it difficult because they're being restricted and they're overwhelmed. All right. If and when this person does reach out to you, Cancer, Give them their space. Let them grow. Let them become a bit more bold to stand up for what they believe in, for saying to the person that's restricting them what they need to say. Because if they don't do that, and if it's just one-sided, if only you are doing that, that's not the right way. That's not the right kind of relationship you want. This has to be a two-sided thing, right? Can't be one way. That's not the way relationships go. Here we also have the, with the Eight of Wands, you are definitely going to have this person reach out to you. So if the majority of the reading is resonating with you, um, that part definitely will as well. All right. 
Just going to do a quick prayer. All right, these messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael Gabriel, and Uriel. Wow, the way it came out, recovery just flipped right out. Not bad at all, Cancer. Very nice. Very happy to see this. You have some really great cards here. Very good, positive uh, messages coming through. <clears throat> so these messages are brought to you by Archangels Michael, Raphael, Gabriel, and Uriel. Here we have whatever sort of issues you have faced in this connection, there eventually is going to be a peaceful resolution, which is great because that is exactly what you need. We also have here recovery. This shows to me that some of you have actually, you've become sick. Some of you literally sick to the stomach because of what this person did. But others of you, underlying issues that you may have had before, and this person has totally stressed you out. I'm seeing the word drained. You just feel drained. If that is the case, stick around because I do have a package I'll be talking about later that can help you with that. Here we have the hope that there is recovery in the coming future. When? After the peaceful resolution. Here we also have you are ready. So you will be ready to handle and to tackle anything that comes to you in the coming future. Meditation will bring you answers. You are ready emotionally, spiritually, and physically to handle whatever comes to you. Meditation here, meditating on the source, the holy white light of God, and even praying, two, three minutes minimum, 21 minutes minimum for meditation, two, three minutes for prayer minimum. That's what Angel Fakiel tells me. She's on my website if you want to read a little bit about her. We also have here take action. So... It does appear that in this connection, there is this state of mind in the future you're going to be getting into. And you will know instinctively what you have to do. That meditation and that prayer is going to give you answers. And according to that, you will be able to take the right action at the right time. Right now, you may feel that you are stuck in a situation that is just not going. I'm seeing the molasses. It's just stuck. Here we also have, there is something better. So it does show me that there is something better than the situation that you are stuck in. The connection to move forward. Yes. Yes, there is something better than the situation that you are stuck in right now, okay? This could be two things. The situation will get better or there's going to be somebody better. Two things. And we have here, yes, there is going to be a grand opportunity coming to you. This opportunity could be literally another person or it could be the same person. However, within the connection, there's going to be a really great opportunity. That's beautiful, guys. Here with the recovery card, some of you, if you feel that there's this misalignment between your mind, body, spirit, and your soul, you feel a bit off there. I have something called the chakra checkup. And that is me looking remotely into your home, around your aura, and inside of your chakra centers, your body, which I have the ability of doing so, with the help of Angel Fakiel. That's my angel guide. Like I said earlier, you can read a little bit about her on my website. I'm able to see negative energies. 
things that are around you, things that are inside of you, and things that are in your home. Because they're all over the place. They're everywhere. So this package that I have is called the Chakra Checkup Package. I recommend highly that you get that. I give you a personalized reading tell you what you have, how many you have, and I teach you how to get rid of it. Once you have these methods, you have it forever. If some of you feel that, no, your health and your mind, you know, spirit, soul, it's been fine, but you feel that there is something going on in your home where you live, it's a little iffy, or maybe when that person comes over, there's always something that happens that's negative. I have something called a holy light package. Have a look online at that package as well. That is to help you get rid of negative energies from your home, around your aura, and inside of your body, which is your chakra centers. Once you've gotten rid of these things, what happens is whatever's owed to you karmically, whatever is written in your book of life originally, that will come to you. All right. For some of you who are new, you may not know, but I do have another channel and that is called Asnoitja Audio. I do have some videos on there. And guys, I know it's been a while. Um, I will be, fingers crossed, uploading something very soon. The channel is called Asnoitja Audio, and that is on YouTube. Feel free to have a look at some of the videos. Some of them are on past life and spiritual connections. I have one on negative energies. What and who are negative energies, how to recognize, how to remove. And then I have some on relationship-related videos, advice, on relationships. And the reason why I have that is because many of you, because I do readings, I've seen so many commonalities. It doesn't matter where you are from the world. And so based on those scenarios, based on those issues, I have created videos to guide you through those sort of issues. Now, it's not just any sort of guidance. This is because I have the ability of seeing what's deep down in a person's heart and mind. What are they thinking? They will not tell you, but I have the ability of doing that. So I tell you. And once you know, it's easier to handle and deal with those sort of situations. All right, Cancer. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you guys again. Take care. Stay safe. Bye now.